Hi, and welcome to The Curling Show, the podcast that brings you interviews with the sports top athletes and the people who shape the game. Brought to you by Fit to Curl, a sports-specific guide to training for the world's greatest game by 2010 Olympic gold medalist and Team Martin third John Morris, with a bit of help from me, Dean Gemmel. Buy your copy. It's not too early to think about holiday gifts at fittocurl.com or at your favorite pro shop. He's a former Ontario mixed champion, and he just skipped his team to the title at the Stu Cells Toronto Tankard. Chris Gardner, welcome to the Curling Show. Thanks, Dean. Uh, I've been a big fan of the show ever since summer of 05 when you did Wayne Mada. So I always wanted to be on and honored I can help him. You know, Chris, I've always appreciated that. I met you back in, gosh, I think it was 07, and you were a big fan of the show then, and uh, I appreciate it when a, when a listener likes the show, and uh, even better. I think now actually you, the first time I sat down with you, um, I started asking you a question about one of the interviews you did, and I know it better than you did, and the whole table was like, were you in the interview? Or? Yeah, it was a little <laughs> creepy, actually, Chris. We were a little creeped out, so... <laughs> But hey, you had a nice weekend uh, in High Park in an event that featured Glenn Howard, John Epping, and Brad Gushu. Uh, I know the guys out west would say I should be talking about the West Coast Curling Classic where we had Martin, Furby, uh, McEwen, and Cooey, but uh, good event in Toronto, and it winds up being you against Rob Rumfeld in the final. Uh, I'm sensing maybe there's some new parody in Ontario. What do you think? Well, it's interesting. Um, Glenn is obviously still at the top of the mountain, and uh, everybody wants to be the team that finally wins the provincial final against him. So uh, that is sort of everybody's goal at the start of the year. Um, now, obviously, they have a new team, and it's, I mean, obviously, the skill is still there. They're still tremendous players, all four of them. It's just it's a bit of a different dynamic than I think everybody's used to, and it's going to take them some time to sort that out because the first two events, I don't even think they've played in the final yet. So. It's just, I think the other teams are really gunning for them, and uh, you know, and it's just it's going to take the time. You know, it's coming though. They're, that's a fantastic game. So I think they're still the best, but everybody wants to be the team to knock them out. Yeah. What do you make of the uh, the lineup with Wayne in it? I mean, it seems like such an easy fit, but maybe there is some adjustment going on. For sure. I mean, I think everybody would agree Wayne was the automatic replacement as soon as that spot became available. I don't think anybody else really had a realistic chance of getting that. You don't so, think you were going to uh, get no the call? Surprise there. You're, you weren't Pardon surprised there. You weren't surprised that you didn't get the call? <laughs> I was always hoping for a call from Wayne, actually, but it never happened. But, uh, yeah, no, I don't think so. Uh, that was uh, the automatic fit. And uh, I think they're just, it's just going to take some time to get used to it. It's a, a bit of a new dynamic. Wayne's a, a different personality than Rich. And, uh, you know, it's just every, as soon as they get all, all comfortable and used to doing that on a full-time basis, I think they'll still be pretty good. Hey, the final against uh, Rob Rumfeld, a big steal of two. How, how did that happen? Well, actually, the game itself was, uh, was not that great. I probably shot about 10% in the first four ends, and we gave him two free deuces to start off. So we were actually down 4-1. to one. Uh, we, He forced us to a single, so it was 4-2, I think, playing the sixth. And uh, he had hammered. He was up 4-2. And basically, this is the only mistake he made the entire game was his uh, first shot. He tried to double on two of ours that were close and actually jammed it on the back of his that was on the back of the pin and left my two rocks of mine sitting right behind the button. I plopped another one right on the crotch, and it was basically a triangle right on the pin. He couldn't really do anything. And that was really the only mistake he made. Rob played fantastic all week. I, I was watching him quite a bit. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, it was looking pretty bleak for us about halfway through that, but we managed to find the, uh, the courage to come back from that. Hey, I, I tweeted about Rum, Rob Rumfeld, actually, uh, in that I said, if you, if you didn't know Bob Ingram in 1996 uh, out of Ontario, you might not know Rob Rumfeld, but hell of a curler, isn't he? Oh, unbelievable. He's, I, he's got to be one of the most underrated players in all the province. I think their record is something ridiculous, like 20-2 and two this year. It is ridiculous that this game year. Or something, yeah, I thought I, was, I, I was going to interview him until you won. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there you go. Uh, I, I mean, now... In saying that, I think our record is something like 14-4. and four. So, I mean, we've had a great start to the year, too. We just had one bad hiccup the weekend in Brockville. We managed to knock off last year's champ, Jam and Art, and we were the only team that's able to beat this year's champion with John Epping. And uh, we lost to three teams that I think we went into those games thinking we were going to win without trying. And it's at this level, you can't do that. You have to be ready to play every game all the time, or those teams are going to sneak up on you. And that was really our only bad weekend. The other times, we've been playing really well. Um... I don't know what the guys are doing, but they're just they're making everything in front of me. And I've, I've had relatively easy shots. I don't recall too many circus shots this year, and I think I've been sort of known for that in the past. So, um, yeah, I've been uh, having to do pretty easy shots. And we've just, I don't know, it's, it's been clicking better than it was last year, and we're just going to ride this one out, see what we can do with it. 
So, Chris, name the three teams that should have been automatic wins. Oh, uh, our first game was against... Uh, <laughs> You're Alabama actually going to name them. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, okay, actually, that's a good idea. Maybe I should. <laughs> <laughs> <Hold on. laughs> I shouldn't have stopped you. That was good stuff. Hey, you mentioned circus shots. I've seen you uh, play and make, uh, make everything. I've seen you play and make uh, not as much. Uh, I think you 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 know you can be ridiculous sometimes when you play, and I think uh, you've earned a reputation maybe as a streaky player. Now, Joe Pavia in the Ottawa Sun writes that this year you're, you're trying to work on your attitude a little bit, not break as many, not smash as many brooms, roll as many eyes, and maybe even yeah, exactly. maybe even tweak and maybe even add a little fitness uh, regimen to the routine. Is that helping? <laughs> I think just this year we're looking at the game in a bit more of a mature kind of way where. In years past, it might have been more been sort of doing it as for fun, as more of a hobby. And we all kind of realize, you know, we're, we're taking so much time out of our lives to do this that we might as well take this seriously. So, yeah, exactly. I realized I have to change my attitude in order to win because um, before I would let my negative thoughts interfere with my ability to play. And I, I can't tell you how many lot of games I've lost just because I would, I would lose my head for no reason. And uh, it all changed watching the, our provincial game against Peter Corner last year. Um, I had a buddy of mine at home like tape me all because I wanted to see it afterwards so I could critique it. And um, I just I saw it for the first time that when I when I let it get away from me like that and I got so negative, I saw what that looked like for the first time and I was just like, wow, we, we're never going to win if I continue to act like that. So um, yeah, I just completely have a different perspective this year. I'm taking it just much more in stride. And I mean, the thing with curling is like once you let the stone go, it's really out of your control. Um, you can adjust it a little bit with the sweeping, but if you don't, if you're not about ninety percent shot made out of your hand it's, it's not going to work so I mean stuff happens there was a lot of picks this weekend on both sides for me and against me and uh, that's just part of the game you just have to deal with it and just try to make the best of it so I'm, I'm just going with that attitude and so far it seems to be working so I think this might be the way to go you know I once had you uh, move some books for me too some certain fitness books did you manage to nick a copy because it looked like you shed a few layers uh, I think I still have, uh, yeah, that's right. I, I did get one of those off. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. It looks no, like. That was a good read, Johnny. Uh, that was, that was uh, really well done. You, you look fitter, though. In, in a picture I saw in the Ottawa Sun, I haven't seen you in person this year, but you look fitter. So. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. Fitness has been a big uh, focus over the summer for myself and my girlfriend, Kim, who plays on Lisa for an elf team. Um, I think just, it, it's just amazing. We're all sort of growing up a little bit. And, you know, I mean, like I said, we're taking so much time out of our lives to do this that. Might as well commit to it. So that involves games like our first game in Barrie next weekend. Uh, we have four games almost. As long as we don't lose three in a row, we have four games guaranteed on Friday alone. And uh, that's rough. I mean, the 10 end games, you, you, you know, you're working too hard. At that. By the end of that, you're just crushed. So if you're not in shape, you're going to fall behind. And, and uh, it's just the way it's, like, it's the trend in curling, I think. A lot of teams you see are all in really tip-top shape. I've seen and, that. Uh, yeah, uh, we're, we're trying, we want to be one of the best, so we got to do what they're doing. You really, you really do. It really does make a difference. I mean, I've seen that draw in, in Barry too, where, where some teams will have four games on Friday. Um, yep, and I mean, this year our team alone is, is committed to eleven events already. We're we're four into that now. I think we have seven left, and now we might qualify for the Kingston Slam. So if that happens, there's another one, and that's not even including playdowns and uh, possibly provincials and so on. So. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of time. It's a, it's a long grind, so you might as well be in shape so you can perform your best. So, so where else are you playing? What else is on your schedule this year? Oh, geez, we're doing pretty much everything on the Ontario Tour. Um, we got we got Barry, Whitby, and Gatineau coming up three weekends in a row, all top-level events. Uh, Gatineau is the uh, casino event. That's going to be in an uh, arena setting, which is perfect for us because um, everything is in preparation for making provincials. So, I mean, it, it doesn't matter what we do in the spieling season. Provincials is what makes the year successful. If you don't make it there, it's a, it's a wasted year. So uh, we want to go every year, and we, we realize how hard it is to get there, and we need to work hard and, uh, like I said, just be in the best shape possible. And uh, I think we've been doing that so far. The team really feels confident, and it's coming out in our play. You know, some guys in other parts of the country uh, debate the amount of points available in Ontario events. Um, and this year we've seen teams like Jason Gunlickson and Chris Galbraith come out and play uh, at events in your home province. Uh, how have you benefited from the success of the Ontario Curling Tour? Well, I think the beauty of the Ontario Tour, it's, it's sort of like the AAA in baseball as compared to the World Curling Tour, which is the major leagues. It's, it's sort of, it's realized it is a step below, and I think the players appreciate it and play it as such. We don't go out there thinking more, this is for like the world title or anything, and, and generally it doesn't get a lot of press. And, and but the beauty of that is it's also a lot cheaper. 
because the events are more local. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a way, I think the motto of it is growing the game, and that's exactly what it does. We realize once you get good at the Ontario Tour, you're like, okay, well, it's time to take the next step to the World Growing Tour and start up the mountain all over again. So it's it's like uh, we you have to approach your team like it's a work in progress, and uh, it's almost like an investment, really. The more work you put in, the better results you're going to get out of it. Yeah, that's interesting. So, I mean, um, yeah, it's it just it's helped us prepare for what life on the World Growing Tour might be like, and we want to find out. You know, and I, I tend to think well, while the fields in Ontario may not feature Martin, Furby, Cooey, McEwen on a regular basis, uh, there's a certain middle depth that uh, other provinces may not have. Absolutely. I mean, uh, it's just unfortunate because Glenn's won something like 18 provincials in a row. <laughs> right. People almost outside of Ontario forget that there's other teams that are competing. And like I said, everybody wants to be one to knock them off the mountain, but it's so hard. I mean, they're, they're so good. And it's just like, as soon as you make one miss, you're guaranteed to give up two. If you make another miss, it's probably four. And it's just, you have to expect that everything they shoot is 100% all the time. So Alberta has more of those teams. I think everybody knows that. And it's just, I, I like the point system they have set up. But uh, Ontario is, is, is extremely tough. And, and like I said, uh, everybody wants to be the team that's not cut off. You know, you're, you're from the Ottawa area, a uh, great curling community there. But uh, I was just joking with you about it before we started here. Uh, right. For some reason, a lot of the teams up there don't seem willing to make the trip down the 401 to play in uh, Southern Ontario events. What's up with that? I've never understood why that is. Um, I guess just the teams around here are happy with uh, the local scene. And, yeah, I mean, I've tried to play with a couple of them just for fun events sort of at the end of the year sometimes. And, yeah, and they never seem to want to go anywhere. And I, I've never understood why that is. And there's a reason why Region 1 traditionally hasn't done very well at provincials up until... Cochran did that last year, made the final, I think, in Napanee. But generally, Region 1 isn't considered that strong because the teams don't want to go and travel, and they don't seem to invest too much time into it. They do it more as a hobby. And uh, I guess it's just a mental thing around here, uh, like an attitude adjustment or something. I'm not exactly sure how to explain that. Yeah, I don't get it either. I mean, I don't, I don't quite understand, but uh, it's not big, big travel for those guys. But uh, nonetheless, they, exactly. they, don't, they don't seem to be doing a lot. I mean, guys like you is playing with... Uh, you know, guys from other parts of Ontario in order to make it happen. But um, Yeah, that's right. Uh, Don and I, my third Don Bowser, lives in Ottawa. Yeah. And uh, Brad Kidd and Simon Barrett, the lead in the second, live in Peterborough. So uh, we don't get to practice together. We don't play in Catholics together or anything like that. It's just simply like a tournament and uh, play out in kind of team. And uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a big commitment to play with guys that far away. So that's why we put so much time into it. Like I said, we're playing almost every weekend, something like 12 out of 16 weekends or something like that. It's a big schedule. Hey, you mentioned uh, Ontario veteran Don Bowser, who played a lot of years with Greg Balsden. Yep. Um, you know, uh, for some reason, I thought Bowser was like 42, but he's like 32 or something. Uh, <laughs> he's I, I, 32, but I think his knee is about 50. Yeah, I call him the veteran, and I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute, the guy's 32. It's crazy. But uh, <laughs> other than it's his amazing ball, how good he is, actually, because he has a, a bad knee injury, a uh, medial collateral ligament or something like that, and. Um, it's amazing how well he can still shoot, considering I, I can tell how much pain he's in a lot of the time on the ice. Well, so, other than uh, that, kind of been the, he's sort of been the veteran presence on the team that's maybe helped us grow up a little bit. Well, there you go. You just took my question. I was say I was going to say, other than his bald head, what does he bring to the lineup? And you might have already <laughs> answered it. Uh, he brings a lot of snoring, too. It's, uh, I'm always one that has to room with him. And this he's louder than the TV is half the time. I turn the thing right up, and I can still hear him, so... It's uh, it's an interesting fit, but uh, as long as he's not strangling me, we'll be okay. Well, I think I'll see Don in a couple of weeks, so but I'm still going to call him the oldest 32 year old on the on the Ontario Curling <laughs> Tour. He's not going to like that when yeah, I see. Yeah, no, I've never seen his ID, so we'll, uh, I can't even back that up. We'll <laughs> probably get you guys in a first draw or something. Uh, yeah, well, that'd be fantastic. Uh, we can have a beer together. After. There you go. Hey, so you've won a big event now. Uh, you know, I think this. You know, this two cells Toronto Tankard first event. You know, the first year they did a lot was last year, but you know that's a it's a legit big event. Um, still, and you mentioned this, what, what, what's separating your team from, from teams like Glenn's or, or even a team like John Epping who, who, who didn't win the spiel, but, uh, you know, if, if, if I was a gambler, I might put money on him over you still, but what separates you yet? Um, it's interesting. Uh, we've knocked Johnny off twice this year. And, okay. Uh, Epping, Epping's dead year, then. But... He's dead to me. Pardon me? <laughs> then Epping's dead to me. I'm betting on you oh, now. Yeah. No, I, no, I think they're, they're known as they expect to be the sort of the heir apparent to the throne of, of Glenn. And it's, you, you watch them play and you can totally see it happening. It's just, it's, it's sort of a feeling up process for them. 
that that lineup kind of came out of the blue to a lot of people. But as soon as we saw it, we would think about it and be like, oh, actually, that makes pretty good sense. And uh, John's sort of seeing it as an investment. He's got a young team around him. Uh, Scott Bailey is sort of the grandfather presence on that team. It's sort of the same setup as uh, my team, really. And um, no, except Bailey's yeah, actually and, forty-two, not thirty-two. That's right. Yeah, they're just multiplied a little bit. <laughs> John's got a couple years on me. But uh, I think it's just experience. We're, we need to be in those big-time settings a little bit more than we have been in the past to learn how to handle them. And uh, Johnny's been there a couple times. He went to Canadian Juniors, and, uh, you know, I never got there. So he's got that kind of uh, national experience on me. But uh, the mix was a big thing for us. Uh, my, myself and Kim did that one. And, uh, you know, that was, uh, it was our first time in a national setting. And even though the, the competition isn't really regarded as that serious, the the fact that it's still a national competition, it brings out the pride in you, and you're like, hey, I got Ontario on my back. Whether or not anybody else cares, I care. And, uh, you know, yeah, we had a great time there, and I think that taught me a lot about wanting to be in that situation again, like possibly the briar in the future. So, well, it is a different uh, thing, been, right? When you, so when you wear that provincial crest, you realize you, you represent the curlers of your province and not just your team anymore. Absolutely, and, uh, you know, even if the top players aren't the ones to do it, a lot of curlers still commit weekends off work and whatever to go do play downs to do that. So a lot of people take it seriously. I mean, we joke about it, but, uh, you know, it's, it's still awesome to look back and be like, you know, I, I was there, and, uh, you know, not too many other teams have done that. So it definitely I want to go back and win the mix for sure. It's, uh, the best thing about mix is sort of at the end of the year, it doesn't take time out of your playing schedule. Uh, unfortunately, the Nationals do. We got there, and it was, some, it was in November. And... Um, you know, we, we missed two cash events last year. We missed one of the, uh, I think it was the Nissan and the and something else that, and the Sun Life, that's what it was. Uh, we missed cash events to go and do that, and then we missed out on the flying by a couple of spots. So that's the only unfortunate part about it, but it was still a lot of fun. Hey, what would you think about a uh, mixed doubles event where it was, uh, you did just uh, an East and West or one big old mixed doubles bond spiel in Canada to have a mixed doubles well, one in the worlds? Mixed doubles would be fantastic, but I, I don't know if, if too much time should be invested into a, a national play down for something like that. That's more of a, a game you do for fun. It's more of a drinking game or something like that. But, yeah, but uh, the reality is, it, the reality is that's where you go for. Uh, you know, that's the team you send to a world championship. If you'd won your your Canadian mixed championship, that's what you'd be playing. Yeah, it's true actually, uh, and it's a little bit awkward because before the event, you have to decide between the four of you who gets to go in the case that you win. Yeah. Um, two people on the team have to be generous enough to give that up or it can cause problems. And uh, luckily our team settled on the two really quickly and, there was, and it was, would have been uh, pretty easy for us to, to watch. I, would have, I wouldn't have went. I would have been watching myself. But, uh, you know, I, I think you just do that event for fun. I don't know if you need national for that or not. Well, my only thought on that is that you might get better players in it if it was a, like a one-weekend venture where it was almost like a double knockout spiel real quick. Go in, yeah, play true, with or somebody. maybe hold it in Jamaica or something. And yeah, exactly. Who knows? You, get some, you, know, you get, might get some of the better players in it for, for a weekend. Yeah, I know John Morris sure. has said he'd be interested in doing that. Um, well, then it wouldn't really be fair if John was doing it. So. You don't think so? <laughs> well, he's, he'd be interested in that. He likes the mixed doubles, actually, probably more than I do. I'm not, I'm not totally sold on it, to be <laughs> I honest. I enjoy the mixed competition. Maybe it's all the females around. I'm not sure. Well, it doesn't hurt, does it? It doesn't hurt to yeah, be. Yeah, absolutely either. not. Yeah. That's the, uh, that's, good. that's the Ontario Curling Tour formula as well. Make sure you have a women's event at the same time as the men. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we don't hear too many complaints about that. No, it's, uh, it's good for curling. It's all good. Hey, okay, Chris, uh, we finish with a run back. I give you a topic, and uh, you give me your thoughts in one to three words, as you know, since you're a fan of the show. Sounds good. Let's do it. All right, uh, Amy Nixon, skipping. Uh, surprising, but optimistic. Nice. She, had, she had a good run. I mean, she won a spiel, and she was runner up to Kathy O, and uh, all, yeah, that funny after how she, that happens sometimes. all that after she unfriended me on Facebook as well. <laughs> <laughs> really, you'd think that would do her in. But I like Amy a lot, but I think she, I think she got ticked because I mentioned something uh, to Cheryl Bernard in an interview, and, and after that I noticed she was off my Facebook feed. So, Amy, if you, if, if you want to let me back in, I'm... I'm That's I'll, a good I'll, thing you stopped me from before, uh, mentioning names. <laughs> yeah, I'll let bygones be bygones if she wants to let me back into her Facebook life. How about the Ontario election? Uh, getting unnecessary, way too many. <laughs> How about the Bruins' chances of repeating? I am a die-hard Bruins fan. Um, this is the first time in history I've been proud to say that. I realize this is not the run-back format, but i got to rant about the Bruins. Uh... However, they've gotten off to a slow start, so they better pick it up. 
Yeah, I, I know I'm you're a big awesome. Bruins I'm a fan. Bruins fan. A big, I, I don't know a guy from Ottawa ends up as a big Bruins fan, but nonetheless, we'll, uh, we'll give you My whole family was Canadian fans. I guess I just wanted to fight them or something. There you go. <laughs> How my girlfriend's you? a Canadian fan, too. It's, it's awful. Well, oh, it keeps the games interesting anyways. <laughs> Do you get down to the, have you been down to Boston to see a game? I didn't. I didn't have my passport in time. Otherwise, we had looked into going down, especially for the parade. Anyway, yeah. And uh, it's too bad we didn't get get to do that. But I got to visit there someday. How about mutton chop sideburns? I rocked those a couple years ago. Totally awesome. There you go. You're not doing them now, though. You're you're too sleek now, Chris. You're fit and sleek. Uh, and yeah, I'm doing shaving. Actually, I've got a pretty good uh, full beard going on there. Oh, you do. All right. <laughs> uh, well, I was going to ask you about mixed curling. Give me mixed curling in one to three words. Absolutely love it. There you go. He loves it. You, now, you play with your girlfriend in mix, though, right? I do, and uh, a lot of comments I pay for on the ride home. There you go. It's, uh, <laughs> it can be good or bad, right? You, I think it's usually yeah, good. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's sort of the challenge of mix. Yeah. You can't get too competitive or it, uh, <laughs> it just boils over. How about uh, the revamp Team Furby back in the hunt at the spiels they've been in? Uh, look out well. Yeah, they uh, seem to be uh, rejuvenated a bit. I mean, they lost to Kmart out west, but... Uh, Randy and Dave seem to be uh, seem to be on a you know. Yeah, wasn't Randy talking retirement like ten years ago? Give it up, Randy already. Well, I think he was talking retirement last week. You know, Randy. Sure, I don't know. Yeah. He says he barely, but but uh, these. He's like me. I'll play until I physically can't anymore. I think. I think I think he will too. I don't think I think Randy will do that. Uh, <clears throat> Absolutely. How about the Republicans up for the presidential nomination down here? Um, don't know what to tell you. <laughs> See, you Canadians give us give us down here a hard time with not knowing about your politics. But you know, <laughs> come on, we got uh, we got we got a guy who ran Godfather's Pizza is leading the leading the polls for the presidential nomination. It's crazy. Huh. And finally, the NBA lockout. Um, in three words, I don't know. I'm not a basketball fan, so I'd say um, do not care. Couldn't care less. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's uh, from a professional standpoint, though. It's that's the problem with sports. It's getting out of hand. And, uh, you know, it, the people, you know, say the sports athletes are overpaid. But, I mean, you got to think about it this way. They're the best people in the world at their job, and their job is in an industry that generates billions of dollars a year. So, of course, they're going to get paid that well. And it's not greedy of them. You're paid what the market deems you're worth. So um, it's, it's going to happen in the NHL next year, too, from what I hear. So uh, it's, it's unfortunate, it's, but it's, that's what happens when you're paying people that much. Yeah, I think the only thing that it's pointing out is that the, the demand for the NBA may not be what they what they think it is. I don't know if it's even... That's right, even, and uh, yeah, it's a good barometer to see how important your sport really is. Like, yeah, it's all recovered right away. People don't even talk about it now, but uh, I don't know if basketball can do the same thing. Finally, last one, uh, the uh, the current timeout rule, the WCF timeout rule first. Okay, uh, you're going to have to give me the quick runs for the one, The one last year where they had uh, basically no timeouts in those coaches' visits. Oh, yes, coaches should not get time to come down from the stands. If they're not already there, then they need to be out on the ice right away. I think two or one minute is fair in any situation because just sometimes you just need it, and it's, it's not as long as you're not abusing it, it's fine. So two, I think any competition should have two one-minute timeouts. Two one-minute timeouts. All right, Chris. Hey, yeah. I appreciate your time. Uh, I give everybody, of course, a chance to name their sponsors. So uh, yeah. let me know who's backing you guys this year. Actually, uh, we don't have any financial support this year. We've been uh, campaigning pretty hard, so we're looking to get home with someone. But we got a we got equipment deals through Ashton and Goldwine. So uh, I'll say hello to Aaron Flowers and uh, representatives from both country companies. And I want to give a personal shout out to Bob Holmes, who has generously donated his house twice to us this year now. And uh, anytime you can save six hundred bucks on a hotel, that's that's a <laughs> makes you feel better about taking all that time. Well, that's that's a good sponsorship there. Yeah, but you guys are uh, you guys are a, a good candidate for sponsorship. Actually, well, so. talk to you. Uh, we look pretty good in those curlingshow.com dot com shirts a couple of years ago. I did, I did give you some on. shirts and, and a bit of cash one year. I better not let that yep. out though, or everybody's going to be bugging me for cash. And, <laughs> and cash. I like to throw the ball. Okay, sir. All right, I appreciate it, Chris. A hey, good uh, good good show so far this season, and uh, good luck the rest of the way. Thanks, Dean. Hope to hear from you again. That's Chris Gardner on the Curling Show. If you want to follow me on Twitter. And you know you do. Search Dean Gemmel, Cap D and Cap G, no spaces. And if you're back on the ice and feeling like your body isn't up to the task, pick up Fit to Curl by John Morris. Available at fittocurl.com and at Better Pro Shops. As always, thanks for listening. Here's Black Pudding. Go to work every day You blend into 
the crowd. 